Now, here's what's interesting. The whole first half has been about your calling. And Paul's demanded nothing of you. There's no imperatives. He's just going, here's who you are because of what God has done on your behalf through the person and work of Christ. Here's who Christ is, and here's who you are because you're in Christ. This is Jesus, this is you. This is Jesus, this is you. This is his work, this is your benefit, this is who you are, over and over and over again in the first three chapters. And then he says, I therefore, as a result of all the things that you are, because of what Christ has accomplished, that you didn't accomplish, Prison of the Lord, I urge you to walk in a manner worthy of the calling with which you have been called. Notice how he roots that even, he, here's the imperative and he roots it in the indicatives. I'm calling you to walk, walk a certain way, but I'm calling you to walk a certain way in light of and because of who I just told you you are in Christ. You see that? With all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, eager to maintain the unity of the spirit, the bond of peace. And then he goes to some more indicatives here, one body, one spirit, just as you were called uh, to the one hope that belongs to your call, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all, through all, in all. But grace has been given to each one of us according to the measure of Christ's gift. Therefore it says, when he ascended on high, he led a host of captives and gave gifts to men. So even when he starts in with his first imperative, he roots it in the indicatives. This is very important to note when you're reading the book as a whole, but also when we're answering that question, what makes the good news so good? So let's look there at those first 14 verses and answer that question. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus, by the will of God, to the saints who are in Ephesus and are faithful in Christ Jesus, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. That, that grace and peace, it's kind of a gospel shorthand, right? Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, even as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and blameless before him. In love he predestined us for adoption to himself as sons through Christ Jesus, according to the purpose of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace, with which he has blessed us in the beloved. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses according to the riches of his grace which he lavished upon us in all wisdom and insight making known to us the mystery of his will according to his purpose which he set forth in christ as a plan for the fullness of time to unite all things in him things in heaven things on earth in him we have obtained an inheritance having been predestined according to the purpose of him who works all things according to the counsel of his will so that we who were the first to hope in Christ might be to the praise of his glory. In him you also, when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and believed in him, were sealed with the promised Holy Spirit, who is the guarantee of your inheritance until we acquire possession of it to the praise of his glory. Amen, hallelujah, praise the Lord. That's just good but we need to look at it two more times in order for you to see how good it is. I'm not gonna read the whole thing two more times, but I'm gonna take two passes because I want you to see something. First, I, I want you to see that this good news is good because of what God did. In verse three, who has blessed us. In verse four, he chose us. In verse five, he predestined us. In verse six, he has blessed us. In verse eight, he lavished upon us. And then in verse nine, he made known to us. This is what God did, amen? The good news is good news because of what 
God has done. The good news is good news because we were not asked to do it. And the good news is good news because if we had been asked to do it, we wouldn't have been able to do it. You can't get there from here. That's why this is good news. God did this on our behalf when we could not do it for ourselves. That's what makes the good news good news. Another pass. If we make another pass, we see that this is good news, not only because God did it, but because God did it in Christ. Verse six, blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. Verse four, chose us in him. Verse five, predestined us, and then what? Through Jesus Christ. Verse six, the last part of the verse, in the beloved. Verse seven begins with, in him. And then in verse seven, we have through his blood. Go down to verse nine, the end of verse nine, in Christ. Look at verse 10, in him. Look at verse 11, in him. We get the point? In Christ, in Christ, in Christ, in Christ. This is good news because God did what we could not do for ourselves. And this is good news because God did it in Christ. Now, to unpack that, God, do, God does this in Christ. We understand that he does this in Christ because Christ is the God man. We understand he does this in Christ because Christ is fully God and fully man. We understand that God does this in Christ because it is only as the God man that Christ can keep the whole law and suffer death and overcome death and hell and the grave. But we understand it's important to do for him to be the God man because as man, he has to take on our sin and be our federal head like Adam was our federal head. Adam was our federal head, so all of us sin in Adam. And then Christ is the federal head of all of those who have faith in him so that his righteousness can be imputed to us and our sinfulness can be imputed to him. And all of that is summarized in the phrase, in 